Hey clowns, what's going on? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I bring you a newer analog horror series called Vromia. This series is about a police officer named Jackson on his investigation to find a killer. The series has four videos publicly, but also three secret videos, all of which we will be going over today. This series is by Amukade Bozo, whose channel link will be in the description down below. Please be sure to go and support the original work. Today, we're going to explore all these videos and I'm going to react and analyze and kind of give you my opinion on everything that's going on. But for this one, I'm definitely going to need your guys' help because this takes a crazy turn at some point. But all right, enough of me talking. Let's hop right in. In. Tape one statue. I have a feeling that right now we're we're about to take a journey, and I don't know if I'm ready for it. The description of this video reads: A corrupted VHS was found at a garage sale in Nirvana, California. The VHS was dated back to December 20th, 2011. There are four more VHS. Each one will be uploaded soon. History of the Damned John, John Wayne, Gacy. Wayne Gacy John Wayne Gacy was an extroverted construction worker who was interested in politics and even worked as a clown for birthday celebrations. He wasn't a clown. Gazy was arrested in 1978 when a 15-year-old kid, who was last seen with him, went missing. It wasn't the first time relatives of missing boys pointed fingers at Gazy, but it was the first time officials took their concerns seriously. Soon after, authorities were permitted to entry to the Gazy residence where they smelled roughly 30 bodies buried in a four-foot crawl space Jesus beneath Christ. his house. He was found guilty of 33 charges of murder, as well as rape and torture, and was killed by lethal injection in 1994. Okay. Ted Bundy. Okay, so we're going through, like, summary stories of actual serial killers that exist. It seems like. Ted Bundy relished the attention his killings brought him, and many people in the United States were ready to give him that attention. The Western United States was his hunting zone, with an undetermined number of killings, usually of college-aged women, stacking up from Washington and Oregon all the way to Utah and Colorado. Bundy was captured and convicted of abduction in Colorado, but he escaped and moved to Florida, where he killed several times more. Bundy's ultimate arrest and its aftermath captivated the nation, as the alleged killer functioned as his own lawyer throughout what is thought to be the first televised murder trial, encouraged interviews, and boasted of the admirers he had made. Jack. We call him the Ripper, although we have no idea who was behind one of the oldest and most renowned murder sprees. In 1888, the murder emerged in London's Whittacapel neighborhood and murdered and mutilated five people, all prostitutes. The killer was thought to be a surgeon, butcher, or someone proficient with a scalpel, according to police. By mailing letters explaining the crimes, the killer insulted the community and the police. Despite the fact that several suspects have been named throughout the years, the killer has never been identified. So crazy. The form of identification obtained by the police was from a letter labeled from hell. Okay. Jackson Spring. We switching up the video type. So we got basically a summary of three serial killers. And it seems that the one that stood out the most there was Jack the Ripper, who they said was never caught. And that's really all I got to say, because I have no idea where this is going, but let's find out. Jackson log number one. I finally got a day off. 
The NPD needed extra help dealing with the ever-growing cases. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. I'm moving too fast. The NPD needed extra help dealing with the ever-growing cases of theft in Nirvana. And since it's Christmas time, more and more people are stealing. Some prick even stole Jamie's bike, but the school doesn't have cameras looking at the bike racks. So it's just a lost cause. Me and Amanda will probably buy him a new one for Christmas. Anyways, the city of Nirvana has had rain for 16 days straight. Which is good since California has been in a drought for god knows how long. But today it finally stopped. So I decided to take a walk in the woods behind our house. I decided to take my camera to see if I could get a photo of some of the baby deer that live back there. Sadly, I didn't find Bambi. But I did find an abandoned house. I had no clue it was there. If I ever seen a horror movie house, it's that. Wow, okay. That thing looks like it's barely standing too. What is this foundation? Interesting though that there's a random house this deep in the forest behind your own house. I decided to see what was inside. That was a bad idea. The second I stepped through the door, I got hit with the most foul stench. It was stomach churning. All of the rooms were empty and were covered in empty beer cans, food wrappers, and even condoms. Party house, I guess? Sick bastards. But then I found the statue. I say this a lot, but I used to explore abandoned places and it was very, very rare to find something in good condition, I'd say. That was mostly why you even explored the abandoned places was you were praying that you'd find something old in good condition that would be cool to take a picture of. This is in, from what I can see in this photo, incredible condition for what was a party house. <laughs> November 28th, 1990. Okay, that sounded like it was backwards, so I'm gonna have to reverse that in editing. Um, someone just switched the tape? What the hell is going on? A statue of Jesus Christ. It was well carved out of marble with intricate details and texture. Whoever made this statue is an amazing sculptor, I give them that. But they are sick. When I walked up to the statue to take a closer look, this is what I found. An actual human hand? An arm sticking out of the back of the statue. There were stitches along the underside of the arm. On the back side of the statue there was also a note. It said, The one who saw the lightning. I immediately called the police. I just can't get one day off. When the police arrived, they swept the area for info while me and my co-worker Carter called the fire department. When the fire department arrived, they broke open the statue. We found her. Inside the statue, we found the corpse of 17-year-old Sarah Kruzik. She has been missing for 34 days. There was a photo stapled to her chest. It was titled, Last 7 Seconds of Sarah Kruzik. It looks like she's covered in blood, but she's very happy, which is really making that a lot more disturbing. Why was she so happy? Okay, he agrees. Who did this to her? I have so many questions, but they have to wait. First, I must contact her parents. Okay, so we got a lot of information there. We start off the video learning about three serial killers. I'm not sure what the actual connection is so far, but I'm guessing what we're dealing with here is going to be another serial killer, the person that killed Sarah. But I have a feeling that those details about those three killers will make sense later on. Important though that it says the one who saw the lightning. 
So clearly she saw something, maybe she saw this killer kill someone else, or who knows what the lightning really means. But this killer must be some sort of artist, he had to have made the statue around her body, right? It's also a statue of Jesus, which could have some kind of religious meaning to it. Now, there was also like that whole 30 seconds of just straight up reversed audio, which I'm gonna try to reverse now and let's hear what it says. Yeah, I have no idea what that said. Unless it's in another language, I just have no idea what it is. This date could also be important down here, November 28th, 1990. But apparently there are four more VHS tapes that go to this story. Let's jump into the next one. Tape 2. Package from Hell. Jackson, log number two. Okay, so we're following the same character, Jackson. We were able to contact Sarah's parents. Listening to her mother scream in pure despair, it broke me. I need to give my son a hug when I get home. Anyways, we have received Sarah's autopsy reports. It's sickening. I don't even want to know. Sarah has like autopsy. Drugs and chemicals found in her system. Hallucinogenics, muscle relaxants. Induce cardiac arrest. She was drugged, paralyzed, and then euthanized. Jesus Christ. Seven stab, seven stab wounds along the abdomen, forearm bones were removed and was replaced with a seven inch thick pole stitched shut. Forearm bones were inserted. I will be censoring out that word, but I'm sure you could put two and two together. It's scary. Yeah, that's for sure. How fast your life can be taken from you. Especially when the world is filled with sick fucks like him. Right. Earlier today when I got home, there was a package on our porch. It was labeled, From Hell. Hey, 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 Ah, uh, there's some secret code down there. God damn it. <sighs> I'm gonna have to decipher that. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit in Mechanical Man. Okay. We are really jumping around. History of the world. Iron Maidens. A solid iron cabinet with a hinge front and an interior coated with spikes. Tall enough to confine a person makes up the torture tool known as the Iron Maiden. In the 18th century, the first tales about the Iron Maiden were written. There is no proof that Iron Maidens existed before to the 18th century, despite their reputation as a medieval method of torture. However, there are historical accounts of the Spartan ruler Nabis using a similar tool for extortion and murder circa 200 BC. Ironically, the Abbasid vizier Ibn al creation Zayats of a wooden oven like chest with iron spikes for torture would be applied when he was imprisoned and put to death in 847. Theoretical Iron Maidens, according to Wolfgang Skild, a professor of criminal law, criminal law history, and philosophy of law at the University of Bielefeld, were built together from relics discovered in museums to make magnificent objects designed for commercial exhibition. In museums all around the world, such as the San Diego Museum of Man, the Meiji University Museum, and various torture museums in Europe, there are several 19th century Iron Maidens on display. Why are you telling me about that? Inside the package was three pictures. The first picture was that of a painting presumably made by the killer labeled Home. What in the hell is this supposed to be? 
Second picture was a drawing of a house on fire. Looks more like the house exploded. But whose house is that? I'll send these images to investigators to see if we can locate the house in the drawing. The last picture is interesting. It's a photo labeled... The Serpent. That's him. That's the killer. A very skinny man, no hair, and a sadistic smile. Why would he send me a photo of his face? Is he taunting the police? No. He's taunting me. But why me? That doesn't matter right now. The killer knows where we live. I need to get Amanda and Jamie somewhere safe. Oh, and before I forget, the date is December 18th, 2011. I need to remember to put dates on these logs. Don't forget. Dude, I don't even know where to begin on this one. Okay, so for the text at the bottom here, uh, we do have a translation. The translation is, are under the influence of an angel punished by God. So that's basically saying that they're under the influence of Satan. But who's under the influence of Satan? The victims or the killer? I'd like to think the killer, but maybe the killer thinks that he's punishing his victims for being under the influence of Satan. As far as the package that Jackson gets, it did say it was from hell, which does tie back to Jack the Ripper in the first video. There's also the whole thing about Iron Maidens, which I don't understand how that connects to anything so far. Now, this does say it's called home, so this could be like a picture of hell or something. I'm not exactly sure. Now, the second picture being this house, I thought this would be the house of Jackson, but he doesn't recognize it, so this could be the house of another victim or it could be the house of the killer maybe this was a childhood home or something who knows and apparently this is the killer the serpent and uh bro bro definitely does look like a psychopath with that smile and just that look the killer is obviously taunting jackson and it might be because jackson was the person who just found the body so he's like you know torturing him now and it seems that jackson does have kids so if i'm jackson i'm very worried right now my family would not be leaving my site but i'm curious to see where this goes next i'm loving this analog horror series right now just because those two episodes tied in one after the other and have tons of connections already so i like that a lot but here we go let's jump into the next one tape three trash bag I can already tell you by the title and thumbnail of this one, this ain't gonna end well. More cartoons. Folks, I'm going down to St. James Infirmary. See my baby there, she's dressed out on a long white table. She's so sweet, so calm, so fair. Let her go. Wherever she may be. Don't understand the context of the cartoons yet. Jackson log number three. We got a call from the Nirvana Museum of Historical Arts. Someone had broke into the museum late last night and had stolen one of the Iron Maidens on display. How you steal something like that without getting caught? That thing was huge from what we saw about it. Okay, though. <laughs> I hadn't even taken a sip of my coffee yet, and we already got a call about a missing torture machine. It's been a real strange couple of days. When we arrived on scene, we noticed several windows were broken at the front entrance. But there are no shards of glass on the floor or windowsill. Strange. Very. When we checked the display that was holding the Iron Maiden, the display case was still locked, plus it wasn't broken in any way. The Iron Maiden seemingly disappeared. When we checked the CCTV footage, all of the cameras were rebooting from 11.45 to 12.14 a.m., all except for one camera that was facing the alley next to the museum. The camera showed the thief carrying a trash bag to the end of the alleyway, then hiding it behind a dumpster. a breeze picking fruit from off the trees la 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 
Howdy. Oh, you startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I may When we investigated the alleyway, we found a note under the camera that was facing the alley. It said, I hope you enjoy the present I left for you behind the dumpster. Serpents. What's in the damn trash bag? What's in the trash bag? I quickly found the bag and tore it open without any hesitation. I ended up cutting my hand on a sharp piece sticking out of the bag. The glass? It's glass. The bag was full of the glass from the broken windows. And right on top of the pile of glass was a photo with writing on it. This was the photo. Help me. He has a hostage. Hopefully the boy is still alive. Before I could get a better look at the photo, my partner Carter snatched the photo out of my hand. His face turned pale. The boy in the photo is Caden Dust, the son of my partner Carter Dust. We will get your son back. I assure you. I just don't know where this is going yet. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some kind of theory, but I just can't think of anything. So this killer is definitely precise and strategic. He steals the Iron Maiden when the cameras are rebooting. Knowing that only one camera worked, he made sure to make a scene on it so that they could find this new information that they now have one of the police officer's kids. But it still doesn't quite explain how the Iron Maiden just disappeared. They did say that the display case was still locked and almost in perfect condition. So how did it disappear from the display case? It makes sense how he got in. They said that the windows were broken, but it doesn't make sense how he got, how he transported the Iron Maiden. And there's like no proof of it even leaving the display case other than the fact that it's not there. We are also back again with another smile of a victim, somebody that's clearly in pain but somehow smiling. My theory of why they're smiling is it could be from the drugs that they're on. That does seem to be an important trademark by this guy. He smiles in his own photos, his victims smile too. I have no idea where this is going to go next. I have no clue. Hey guys, what's going on? Editing Marcus here. So I kind of lied to you. There is one more main video left and three other secret videos, but I decided to divide this video up into two parts. I figured before I took the big dive into adding on another like 40 minutes to this video or however long it's going to be, I'd ask you guys first if you even want to see all that. But if you guys want to see more of the Vromia series, make sure to get this video to 3000 likes. This is the highest like goal I've ever asked for, but I think you guys could do it if you really want to see more. I honestly enjoy the series so far but with the next video you guys are going to be thrown for a major loop but also other than liking the video be sure to let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments down below what do you think of the series so far and also as always please be sure to go support the original videos and the original creator link will be in the description and if you're new here don't forget to subscribe we're trying to hit 200k before the end of the year as always big shout out to my members you guys are the absolute best thank you so much for all your support if you want to see more analog horror videos you can click right here but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.